Ladies and gentlemen, this dish is definitely worth your time. Good morning. Today I'm going to be making some Texas home style pinto beans. Folks, pinto beans, if they're done right, are flat delicious. You might think, well, that's just sort of plain Jane, but not when they're done the right way. When you spice them and flavor them and add the right things to it, pinto beans turns into an absolutely delicious, delightful dish. They're healthy and good for you, but there's something I need to mention every once in a while, every great once in a while, a rock gets in the bag. What does that mean? Well, when you're pouring out your beans, and I learned this as a child, when you pour out dry beans to soak them, you want to sift through them to see if there's any tiny stones. You don't want to bite down on that and chip a tooth. That's actually happened to me before. I bit down on a rock. Didn't chip a tooth, but it didn't feel good either. Well, the thing of it is, learning from the past, I now always sift through my beans. And I had a, um, a viewer on another bean video of mine that um, wrote in on the comments. He said, when was the last time you found a stone in your beans? And uh, I replied back about three months ago. Now I had that conversation with him, I think it was about a month back, month or two maybe. And um, so it's not been that long ago since I had a stone in my beans and that was just this last winter. And it wasn't a big one and it wasn't a hard one. It was more like a hard dirt clod. But it, you know, and the thing of it is that I found that out when I went to um, investigate it by washing it and I thought I would clean it and it turns out that it just, uh, after a couple of minutes, broke down under water and it was a hard dirt clod. So I avoided having a little bit of mud in my, in my beans, I guess you could say. Regardless, always check them, sift through the bottom, you might find something, and if so, just discard it. It doesn't take that long. I'm going to take you in the kitchen now. We're going to look at these ingredients, and I'm going to get busy cooking up some of the most delicious beans you're ever going to have the opportunity to eat. Folks, this is the way I've been eating beans since I was a boy. Mom made them this way, and I'm going to show you how to do it the same way. Come on, let's go. Now folks, today our ingredients are quite simple. I have some pinto beans. These have been soaking overnight. They came uh, dry and this makes a good recipe this way. The only way I know of doing this better is to get fresh pintos. Good luck with that. I used to grow them as a boy, but it's hard to find them fresh in the store. So get you a bag of dry pintos and let them soak for at least 12 hours. Now. We're also going to be using some onion. It doesn't matter what kind you use. It can be yellow or white or red or whatever. Just get you a medium onion. You're going to need some garlic. You're going to need some chilies. Now, it doesn't matter. On this, I want to use jalapeno. You can use poblano. You can use bell pepper if you want it really mild. You can use any kind of chili you want on this, folks. Just get some chilies for in there. We're also going to be using some bacon. Now, on that bacon, I'm going to be... Oh, just wonderful. You can use any kind of bacon you like. This is going to be, I think, this is applewood smoked. You can use hickory smoked or plain uncured bacon, whatever you'd like, folks. We're also going to be using some bay leaf, cumin, and paprika in this dish. And folks, when you combine them the right way and cook them up the right way, it's just flat delicious. Now folks, after you have soaked beans overnight, don't cook them in that soaking water. You can, but you need to know the soaking water might increase flagellants in some people. I've never noticed a problem from it, and I have cooked up my beans in this water before, but other folks just insist that you should rinse them. So on this video, I'm gonna do exactly that. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't, today I will. These get rinsed off in a colander, put with fresh water, and that way we can get our veggies in there and start cooking it all up together. All right, right down there. And I've got that some, some fresh water. I'll probably need to get more water in my pot. Now folks, it's time for me to work on the vegetables and there's something I want to mention about all of this. When it comes to handling chilies, 
I recommend putting some gloves on. Makes a big difference. There we go. This just makes life a little easier. First of all, capsaicin, which is the hot stuff in this, that doesn't wash off the skin very easy. Even with soap, a lot of times the oil will remain behind. You think you've washed it off your hands, you go and um, scratch in a sensitive location, and suddenly that location is burning and you realized it didn't wash off as easily as you thought. Okay, so gloves prevents all of that. <laughs> Isn't that nice? This, I need to fix it so that it's diced, but I've got to remove all of this paper in the outside, so I'm just going to cut the top off of it, leave the root, and then uh, remove the outer segments. Okay, folks, now let's get this all cut up. I need to dice this onion, and I want to show you the best way I know of doing it. I picked a really wonky-shaped onion to do this with, too, so it's a perfect for this lesson. I'm going to make a cut from the root straight down to the end that I already cut off. I've already removed the outer papers. So there we have. There's a half of and another half. Sometimes in the middle of red onions, at the, uh, the, the top of them, you'll see a little bit of the onion that's kind of dark. Don't let that bother you. There's nothing wrong with it. It's normal. Reds are kind of weird, all right? Now, when it comes to cutting an onion like this, you have the side here and here, and we need to make a perfect die. So that means cutting three ways. This way, this way, and this way. And that's what I'm gonna do. Always cut away from you. When you're doing this, put them fingers together. Put them on top of that onion, all right? Then gently, very easily cut backward. Now, if it gets tight and your knife doesn't want to move, take the knife and release the friction on there by just twisting the knife. Boom, when you do that, it separates that blade from the onion, okay? Just a little twist like that, okay? Push it through a little more, twist, there we are. Now, I'm going to do the other one the same way, and we're going to get on with it. There we are. Lengthwise cut. Boom. Now, if you would, come to the other side and look at it from this way. So, you've seen me cut this crosswise this way and lengthwise this way. So, it all fans out to make these perfect little dice. And if you don't cut it crosswise on the side, then you get long pieces right here. So, you need to cut that so that that doesn't happen. Now, when I do this, I get perfect dice. Isn't that easy? Look at this, folks. Look, it's all even. They're not weird or wonky or different shapes. And that means even cooking. But it also just looks better in the dish, okay? So, there we go. Now, if you thought, oh, that's so hard to do. Why do you do all those extra steps? That's not hard. That's easy to do. Remember, I've already made that cross cut right there. Onto these, let's start by removing that stem. And what we're going to do is we're going to do this, open them up, and I want to show you how to remove all the seeds. Now for this little maneuver, you're going to need a spoon handy, all right? What we do, we first just split these open lengthwise. Be careful doing this. You don't want your hand to slip. Okay. So the problem is jalapenos are hot. People don't want to eat jalapenos because they burn their mouth. Let me teach you a trick. The heat of a jalapeno is not found in this dark green part. The heat is found in the light green part and the seeds and especially the membrane that holds this, that seed to the inside. So let's remove this vein and this, and you removed 90 to 95% of the heat in that jalapeno. At the same time, you've just gotten some nasty material out of your way that you don't necessarily want down in that pot of beans. Who wants a bunch of seeds in their beans? Come on now. Well, beans are kind of seeds, aren't they, right? <laughs> okay, there we go. Well, we've gotten all of the seeds out of them. They're nice and pretty and ready to work. All I have to do now is cut some narrow strips. I'm looking for about quarter inch wide strips or just a little narrower. So strip yours out just that same way. Now folks, I'm gonna tell you a trick. When it comes to cutting a chili like this, 
You see how I'm cutting it from the inside? You're going to find that a whole lot easier, all right? And the reason it's easier, well, it just cuts easier. The skin is very slick and it wants to resist cutting on the outside. But, of course, if you have a sharp knife, you know, not an issue. But um, if your knives aren't just exquisitely sharp like mine, that right there, what I just did, can be a difficult thing, all right? Now, see how my fingers are curled under? The tips are under, not out like this, because that you can cut your tips with. But if they're curled under, that blade side will hit that knuckle, and you don't have a problem, okay? Okay, let's get into that garlic. Now, if you have a hard time breaking into a garlic clove, here's your trick. Push down. Okay, did you hear that crackling? Now try opening it. Looky there. And what that does, just pushing down gently kind of breaks it apart, opens it up some. Let me pick out a few of these cloves here. There we go. Four little cloves. All right, now, when it comes to getting the paper off the garlic, let me show you a trick. Put the garlic between your thumb and first finger and gently twist. times like that and that paper breaks loose and this was very fresh garlic so that paper was attached quite well look at this there it is now clove comes out neat and that didn't take any real work you know it's quick this is an idea I came up with when I was a little kid believe it or not I tried doing this and I was like hey this works and I stuck with it my whole life now to prep these to go in the dish is as simple as this. Simply cut the scab off of the end. I do that only because I don't like to see it in my dish. Maybe I'm a bit too picky, but I am that picky. So get rid of them. Now these simply take and crush them. Take your edge, turn it down a little bit, and just push down like so. And that crushes that garlic clove. All right. All right, there we go. My garlic's ready to go in there. There we go. So, got the garlic in there. Our veggies are all diced up and in there. Let's turn our attention to getting the bacon cut up and down in there also. All right, so I have about a pound of bacon out here. I think this is thick sliced. And um, I got, I think, seven slices of it. So and the reason I'm not slicing it with it all stuck together is I don't want it cooking up that way. So I'm just separating it first and then, then getting it sliced out. Okay, there we go. Now I want to cut this into pieces that are going to be comfortable for me to eat in that in those beans. So about a half inch wide roughly. All right, now I'm going to get this in my pot. I'll break that apart a little bit. Now, folks, it's time to get this thing spiced up. I don't want to throw the spices on the bacon there because it'll just season my bacon. I don't need that, right? Okay, so let me get a little more water just to help top it off. We're going to start bay leaf, okay? If you pull out an itsy bitsy bay leaf, we'll use two of them, but that's a big one, so it's going to be more than enough. Bay is a wonderful flavor when it comes to beans, folks. It just works. Now that right there, we're going to be gentle with it. One. Look at that. Two. Uh-huh. Do I want more than two teaspoons? If you want to do more, you go right ahead. But for me, I want two. Paprika. And paprika is a mild spice. It's very good. And it really gives a lot of character to pintos. One tablespoon. Okay. Oops, look at that big old two tablespoons. And if it's not perfectly accurate, guess what? You won't be punished in life. Okay, three tablespoons right there. Put the heat under it. Get those spices stirred in nice and pretty. And folks, you got a pot of delicious getting ready to happen right here oh yeah 
Oh, folks, look at this beautiful pot of beans. That is gorgeous. Now, the colors, they are explosive right now. This is going to change a little bit. It's going to turn kind of brown in color. But I tell you what, the flavors, when you do your beans like this, you could put all of this goodie in here. Those beans come out tasting absolutely wonderful. This is beans. The best way you can make a pinto bean right there. Now, folks, a lot of people call this by different names. Some people say it's ranch style beans. Some will say that's cowboy beans. Some will say that's charro beans, which is, by the way, cowboy beans. And, you know, the fact of the matter is just this is just what we've been doing in Texas forever. And I grew up with, like I said, mom was making beans like this a long time ago. When it comes to what you're putting down in there to that bacon, if you don't want to use the bacon, you don't have bacon or whatever, think about this. This is a great time to use up old stuff. If you got some old ham, that old frozen ham from whenever, pull it out of the freezer, throw that thing down in there. Put some ham hocks in there. Be creative, but enjoy those beans because they are worth it. All right, turning on my heat, and I'm going to lower that flame to about a medium high. That way it's on the center of the pot and it'll get good heating. All righty. Now, I've got this covered. We've got our flame underneath it. The steam is just starting on this. Now, when this comes to a full boil, what you want to do is lower the temperature to low, keep the lid on it, and let it simmer for one hour. I want to bring something up right now. And that is the use of salt. When it comes to cooking beans, this is one of the items you don't want salt anywhere near it until the end of cooking. And that's because beans, well, they don't tenderize the right way if there is sodium in that pot. So we want to keep the salt out of it until after the cooking. Cook it for one hour. Uh, when it comes to a, a simmer, or I should say to a boil, when you lower it to a simmer, start your clock and cook that for one hour then you can add salt to taste, okay? Check your beans at that point to see if they're tender enough. And if they're not, give a little more cooking time until they soften up to your desire, okay? This is delicious. We just got to give it time. Looky there, folks. Up and boiling. So what I want to do is reduce my temperature to a low. All right, nice and low. When I cover it, it'll just keep simmering like that now timer. I'm going to cook this starting for one hour. There we go. So an hour from now I'm going to check these beans. We're going to find out if they're tender enough and if so I'm going to enjoy me some beans. Now folks the quantities of everything that we used today on that bacon go with at least a half a pound. You can go up to a full pound. This is a two pound package so half of this would be a full pound or a quarter, you know, about um, a half a pound is what's going to work well on those beans. So either way, go for with a half to one pound of bacon, one medium onion, two to, well, you can go two to four cloves of the garlic. I was about to say two to three, um, depending on your taste in the garlic. Get some chilies in there, folks. Now you're going to want like one large bell pepper if you do bell, um, one large poblano if you do the poblanos. If you're just doing jalapeno, five medium ones, four or five, that'll be just enough. Your paprika, two to three tablespoons of paprika. Two to three teaspoons of the cumin. Be careful, that'll overwhelm a dish. Bay leaf, one of those bay leaves. If you're going to do a short cook with bay leaf, then you can use two of those but don't leave them in there too long. Now folks, there is a wonderful recipe. Let's take a look at these beans. Now folks, my beans have finished cooking. This was a total of one and a half hours of cooking. And what I did after one hour, I opened my pot, stirred it well, and tasted, and of course it was bland, it needed salt. I added some salt. The beans were still just slightly firm at that point, but not bad. and. I went ahead, cooked it for another 30 minutes, adding salt after another 15 minutes the first time. In other words, I corrected my seasoning. So at an hour, I put in some salt. At an hour and 15 minutes, I added a little bit more, 
cooked it for 15 more minutes. I turned it off and then let it set for 10 minutes. And this is what we have. Nice, soft beans, beautifully flavored, and it's worth your time. And folks, if you would, just take that bay leaf out of there, okay? Set it aside. I can be a little gentle with it. And there we go, folks. That right there is your Texas home-style pinto beans. Mmm. Oh, yeah. Good beans, let me tell you. It's definitely worth your time. The recipe, like I said, I've been enjoying this since I was a kid. It's so nutritious. It's so delicious. It's filling. Mmm. Belongs at every barbecue, every outing, and all through the winter. That's a warm, hearty dish right there, folks. Thank you for watching. Also, take a look right down below in the description. You're going to see some other links. There's my new website, satrotter.com, and that's the company that now owns Texas Cooking Today. It's still my company either way. It's uh, S.A. Trotter Arts, LLC. This is now a project of that. So, thank you very much for watching. Please take a look at the website. Please take a look at what I've got going on at my channel right here on YouTube. And folks, please have a good day. Bye-bye. Come on, you. Oh, yeah.